Thanks, guys, <laughs> for you. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, like Sam said, it's going to be the holidays, so thanks for taking time to come out here. Hopefully, I give you some useful information. All right. Uh, so uh, becoming a product manager, uh, there is conflicting word on the street, as I'm sure you know, that you need to have a technical background to get into product management, uh, which means like a computer science degree, um, you know, official coder. And there are those who say you don't need it. Uh, and I am proof that you don't need it. Um, I got into product management without a technical background. So I came here to tell you guys um, a little bit about that and give you some tips um, from my own experience. Um, Sam said, um, I, was, I was a product manager at CBS Interactive. That's where I got my start in product management. Um, I'm hitting almost six years in product management. I work at Stitcher right now, um, but spent most of the time at CBS. So, yeah. All right, getting to the tips. Um, as a product manager, uh, you're typically called a PM. So my first tip is, know, uh, is knowing what P are you Ming? Um, what product are you managing? Um, so. I would say if you can focus in on categories of product that you're interested in managing and then pairing that with what value you can bring, that to me is really a good fit for a product to transition into. Um, and examples of categories of product, um, there, there are a lot of, there's a huge variety. Um, anything from say like a financial product, like a banking app to um, an educational app to a B2B app, like a, a data app. A data product, sorry, I didn't mean to say app, but, but there are a whole host of different kinds. If you can think about what different ones you're interested in and narrow that down, that will help you. Uh, and as an example, uh, before I got into product management, the categories for me were uh, advertising and media, two areas I was really interested in. Um, and it was a good fit for me because the value I brought, I was working in advertising at the time, so I brought that real life experience. Uh, and I had, had gotten a master's in media, so I brought an academic perspective as well. So it was a really good fit, and it was easier for me to make that transition into an ad and revenue products. Next tip would be um, pairing your non-tech strengths with PM qualities. So I give you some top examples of what I feel are really important PM qualities, like communication, influence, problem solving, um, and the rest you can read there. But um, I wanted to take a moment to focus on this because I know we're talking about the tech side, but the non-tech side that, um, is really important too. So if you are all in non-tech and looking to become product managers, I would say you already have a lot of strengths um, that some people who do have a tech background vying for, say, the same PM role as you don't have. Um, you probably have better communi communication skills. You may be better at problem solving different things. You may be better at organization and prioritizing. That stuff is super important as a PM. So um, I would say take a moment to think about those things. Think about um, like one or two examples for each quality from your current experience or your past experience so that when you get into a job interview or you're networking, you can highlight those really well. Um, next, and this is going to be no surprise to you, uh, dip your feet into the technical stuff. Um, you know, take courses, go to meetups, read, read articles, read a book if you're so inclined, uh, talk to other people who are technical, whether in your company right now or friends that you have, um, start a side project. Uh, these are, these might be things you've heard before, but these are things I've all done. So I wanted to give you those, um, as, as real life concrete examples. And I, I gave a lot of examples within each one. So I believe they're sharing the slides later. So you'll, you'll have all these. Um, I won't go through all of them. But um, some examples of courses, probably you've heard of Linda or Code Academy or boot camps, like Sam was talking about. Um, those are great options. Um, and I listed some topics. If you were thinking about what topics you want to learn about, um, it really might depend on what product you're looking at, fo at focusing on. But some general examples I gave are like HTML, CSS, um, SQL being a good one. Um, and then I wanted to take a moment to say, uh, go to meetups. Uh, that's a super easy thing, super low cost. Uh, and being in the Bay Area, you are super lucky. Um, there are a ton of meetups around this and a ton that are specifically around tech. And I listed some out here that I found from a quick search. Uh, so you could really just go sit on, in on these meetups and sort of absorb the knowledge. Um, and you will learn these technical things over time. Um, and then also gave examples for things you could read, newsletters you could sign up to. Um, it all just kind of absorbs in you over time. And that's me speaking from experience. Uh, and 
And um, before I became a PM, the things I did were basically four out of five of these bullets. And the fifth bullet I did after I became a PM. Uh, so I, I did a lot of this. I, I did a lot of the pre-work. So just to tell you, you know, you, you put the work in and you'll, you'll get what you're looking for. Uh, all right. Next tip. Um, now that you, we've talked about dipping yourself into the technical stuff, have a story around it. Um, so it's really easy to take some courses and put them on your resume. And yes, they look great and they might, they might get you your foot in the door for an interview. Uh, but I feel like having a story will really highlight some of the things you've learned in a more memorable way. Um, for example, um, before making a PM, uh, I was actually, I was in media, I was on the TV side, and I was trying to transition into the digital side, which is more technical, um, and to the PM side. So I'd taken some courses, I read a lot of stuff, and talked to people in the company. So I had amassed the knowledge, and by the end, I was teaching our interns about digital, the digital side of the business. Um, so that was a really great story that highlighted what I learned in a really effective way. Um, and then, next tip, um, think like a PM. Um, when you start thinking like one, you will just kind of be one <laughs> in your everyday life. Um, and I gave some uh, quick, quick questions to sort of ask yourself to get yourself thinking like a PM. Um, basically, look at the world around you. Look at everything you use, whether it's the apps on your phone or actual physical products, and say, you know, why do I like this product or service? Um, ask yourself. And then um, what would you do to improve it? Because everything can be improved. Um, and then here's, here's the catch. Um, this is a part where it could get technical, is how would you improve it? Um, that makes you have to think about oh, it's, it's really easy to spew out what you don't like about something and what you would do to fix it. But then when you have to think about how to implement that fix, that's when things get tough. <laughs> and not to say that you should understand, oh, you know, this is exactly how you should code it. That, you know, that's not what I'm saying. It's more, um, it's the exercise of going through it and asking those questions. Um, when I said before, you could talk to people who are technical to start learning technical stuff, you could even ask that question to you know, uh, an engineer who works at your company or a friend um, and see how they, would, you know, how they would solve the situation or what their technical expertise is. Um, it's really more about what questions you would ask, especially when you're in an interview situation. Um, no one is expecting you to know exactly what the solution is, just that you're thinking about it. And thinking like a PM is great, but you should also talk like a PM. Uh, so, Another example I gave here that you could practice is practice explaining tech to non-tech people. Um, and there is the flip side of that, which is explaining a regular idea to a technical person. Um, now that second one, I feel like those with a non-tech background probably are better at. Like I was saying before, you probably have pretty strong communication skills. So I wanted to focus on the first one, which is explain tech to non-tech people. So this all ties in, this ties into what I was saying before, where you want to dip your feet in the technical stuff. So, you know, learn, learn a concept, you know, read about it, talk to someone, try and understand it, and then try and turn around and go explain that to someone who doesn't know it. Uh, and that will help refine the, the technical side of your communication skills, which is, which is pretty helpful. Um, and I know everyone's going home for the holidays, and you must have a parent or a relative, someone who's allergic to tech. Uh, and so I challenge you to find something and explain it to them. Um, as an example, before I became a PM, um, I mentioned I was on the TV side of media, so I gave a presentation to a room full of TV sales executives about Twitter. Um, Twitter at the time was just becoming big, and they, most of them didn't even know about it. So I told them what it was, I explained to them how it worked, and then I told them why it was important for them to know about it. Um, so that was an example that, that I, where I was able to actually do that and sort of use that again as a story when I went into an interview. So you see the, you see the theme here. <laughs> Mix, get some stories out of all this. And then uh, my last tip is to be patient and unrelenting. Um, you know, it's not going to come overnight, and I think you all probably know that, but it is totally worth the effort. <laughs> I'm here telling you that. Um, be patient in that learning takes, takes a little bit. Um, but, you, you know, go to meetups, you know, tell yourself, I'm going to go to, you know, two meetups a month, you know, every month, and then you will slowly learn these things. Uh, and then finding the right fit also takes time. Um, and it's not just trying to transition into, transition into product. It's if, you know, if you were applying for another job, even in your same area right now, 
you know, you're not going to get it overnight. You're still going to have to go through the application process, all the interviews. So it's the same type of thing. It's just, um, just be patient, but, you know, just keep doing it and, and don't give up on it and you'll definitely get it. Um, and it's all worth it. Um, you're you're going you're gonna to keep learning. You're going to keep doing. And even once you get into product management, that's what it's about. Like, I'm still learning to this day. I'm still trying to learn new things. I'm trying to be better. So it's, it's, an, it's a forever process. Um, and that's kind of one of the qualities of PM that you kind of always are curious. You want to know how something works. You want to know how to do something better. So, so yes, um, that is it. I, didn't, I wanted to keep it short since people are probably coming from work. Um, and you guys might have some more specific questions. I don't know exactly what background each of you has and what you're looking to get into. Um, one thing I didn't mention here, but I did want to bring up, is that I don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys are, have a, uh, you know many years of work experience or just a few, uh, and that might that might uh, affect what kind of PM role you wanna you wanna try and get into. So when, when I transitioned, I actually went into an associate PM role. Um, and it was an easier transition because I was asking to go into an associate's role. Um, I just decided I'm just going to go laterally or even slightly lower than laterally because to me it was worth, um, it was worth the trade-off because instead of another year of applying for product management jobs, I had a year of experience under my belt. Um, and then at CBS, I started as an associate. I moved up to a PM and then a senior PM. So you know, you learn, you learn no matter what role you're in. I know it might be more difficult if you, you know, have a lot more experience and you really want to move into, straight into PM and not an associate. And it's something you could do. I would say these tips will probably help you with that. Um, if you're looking to go into an associate's role, you, you know, you're not expected to know as much, I would say. You know, I was not expected to know as much from the technical side as an associate. Um, the big thing is really just not being afraid of the technical side. Someone just wants to know that you're not afraid of it and you're willing to jump in, you want to learn, and, that, and, and that's really the big thing. So, questions, anyone? I know I ran through it kind of quick. Yes? Uh, so, I'm trying to make a career switch into uh, a PM, and then I don't mind doing uh, APM role, but the problem is that uh, I'm having trouble getting my resume past the recruiter mm -hmm. or even the online process because I noticed that most of even the APM roles still requires like two years of experience. If you're trying to like make a jump, what, what advice would you have on getting that experience to at least put on your resume? To yeah. Get your foot in the door? Gotcha. Yeah, and I feel like there's been this trend of people ta talking about um, algorithms and things being used to scan resumes, and then that kind of you know may or may not be why it's difficult for you. I would say um, if you're looking in this area, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and sorry, I need to repeat the question. I mean, you were you were asking. Um, Trying to, to even move into an associate PM role, I feel like it's difficult, um, and your resume isn't getting getting past past the desk, and you're not getting that that first interview. Um, so, I would say um, you are looking in this in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you're in the Bay Area. It probably is a little bit more competitive here because this is sort of the mecca. But there's also a flip the flip side to that, which is that there are a lot more opportunities out there. So. Um, so I would I would say try every angle you can and to to boost your chances and that will pretty much be what helps you. Um, and in terms of what can you do to boost your chances, I would say and I know some people don't like this, but networking is huge, uh, especially out here. Um, and again, you're lucky to be out here because you know there. I'm guessing you know at least a handful of people who are all in tech or who know someone who's in tech. So just put yourself out there. Tell people like this. This is what I'm looking to do. I'm super interested in this. Do you know anyone you know that I can talk to? And ask for informational interviews. Um, I don't think you'll get very many no's if you ask for an informational interview for anyone at, in any company. Um, if they're busy, ask them to pass you off to someone else. Um, and and I know not everyone likes networking, and it's something I didn't used to like, but it's just you just keep doing it, and it gets easier. I swear. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. Basically, um, that's the key. I would say the product management, one of the keys, 
not only, because you can always find the person that knows what you need to know. Um, you don't have to know everything. So how do you make those connections? So if you can tell a story around that, I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, and then I just wanted to add, since you're, since the question was about, you know, maybe not having enough on your resume to get that first interview, um, I'd say, well, then just ask yourself, what else can I do to add more of this stuff to my resume? Um, and one of the, the things I mentioned for dipping your feet into the technical stuff was having a side project. That's the easiest thing that gets told to most people. When you have a side project, that bam, that can go on your resume. It's typically more than one bullet. It's really interesting. It makes people want to talk to you and ask you questions about it. It shows your initiative. It, it like hits so many bullets off that list, off that checklist of is this person a good candidate? You're proactive. You're spending extra time just to work on this. Um, you, you're interested in something. Um, so there's, I, I'm a huge advocate for the side project. Um, I did that recently when I, before I moved into my role at Stitcher. Um, I, did, I had two side projects on my, on my resume. Um, definitely always got asked about at least one of them in any interview. And that's something that you can, that can go on your resume if it should be subjected to the algorithms that may or may not exist in the recruitment world, then you, know, you can then throw specific keywords that are related to product management in there. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so the question was, what are some examples of side projects that I did? Um, just to be clear, before I, I got into product management, I technically did not have a side project that I did. Um, again, kind of moving into the associate role, I, at the time when I moved in, I think it wasn't, probably wasn't as competitive. And it was OK that I did not have a side project. It, it, you know, didn't, not that everyone needs to, but um, I, did, I did the side projects after I got into the associate's role. So the first project I did was uh, building a website. Um, I wanted to build a, a website around um, big topics in the news. So, uh, so it was a pretty simple website. I built it off of WordPress. Um, I just Googled everything I didn't know. <laughs> And, and you know, I had a little bit of background in, um, I had taken a course on like basic HTML, CSS. So I was like, hey, let me use this stuff that I learned and, and do a side project about a topic I'm interested in. Uh, and that was a great learning experience. And the site wasn't anything fancy. Um, you know, it, again, it's, it's about having a story that you, you built something, especially as a PM outside of the technical side, that you had an idea and you executed it. Um, and you learn something from it. It may not have been, have been perfect. Um, so that was the first project. The second project I did was more recently, um, and I had had a bit of PM experience uh, before it, but I basically did do pro bono work for a startup. Um, I asked around, found, found someone who was interested, um, who wanted someone to help, help work on something. Startups are a great place to look because they don't have enough people, and they need to do you know, 10,000 things by tomorrow. Um, and I would say, you know, not everybody answered my request when I started asking around, but you just, you just keep asking and you'll find someone who's interested. And again, you can then kind of hone it down to, to startups that you, might be, um, that, that you might be interested in, that are in the area of the products you're interested in. So kind of like double, triple whammy when you can help them out with something like that. I don't think many people want to say no to free labor. <laughs> so that's a benefit of being in this area too. Yep. Oh, sorry. We'll we'll get to you after. <laughs> um, hi, so hey. As part of the product team right now at a fairly or a really large company, um, and I just don't agree. I guess I disagree with my manager's uh, use of you know the technology we're we're building. So, um, how what would be a good way to you know explain that in future interviews if they ask why I left? You know, a really large company to um, to do something else. You know, without really like getting into um, you know making it sound like I, I don't know. I'm just fired from my, my former. Yeah, gotcha. And that's a good point that you make. That folks always say you don't want to be too, you don't want to get negative in an interview. So that's that's a really good point. You don't. You don't want to make it seem like you're disparaging. Even if you're not, it could come across that way um, to someone else. So that, that's a great point. And I would say um, do, 
do the best you can to, I mean, personally, if it was me, uh, I do the best I can to kind of avoid that conversation and give it a little bit of a better light and, and just say, hey, I'm looking for a new challenge. Maybe you're looking to work um, on a different type of product or a different area. Um, and, and you could still bring it up because it, it is an interesting topic and it could highlight your strengths. You could say, you know, they had, um, my, at my company, they had an interesting take on technology, you know, and I had some, I had some ideas, you know, that, you know, that could potentially take it in a, in a different direction. Um, and hey, do you want to hear them? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, so about your side project, can you list them on your resume? We put them in a different section because I'm doing a side project, and people just—that's the first thing they ask about because it's both their cousin. They work full time and they're doing a side project. Gotcha. Comes off weird. Yeah. Gosh, uh, the question was, if you do have a side project, how do you list it on your resume so that it doesn't confuse people? Um, I am trying to remember what I did on my resume. I can't even remember at the moment. Um, I think I did list it under my experience, but what I did write was like, uh, I actually think I used the word pro bono, and then I think that makes it clear, oh, this is probably something this person's working on on the side. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could ask, anyone else, you know, friends, whatever, for, for feedback. I, I love uh, the crowdsourced brain, you know, comes up with more ideas than you can yourself or asking the internet. But yeah, I, I use the word pro bono. Yeah, you could make a separate section if you wanted to and if you have the space to on your resume. I don't think there's any harm in that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, yes? Can you speak at all to product management of non digital products? Oh, uh, the question was speaking to product management of non-digital products. Um, I'm going to make a disclaimer. I've only worked on digital products. Uh, I do think the, uh, the basic, the role, the role as a product manager and what you do um, is basically the same. I think it's the same qualities. It's the same type, you know, the same type of work and skills you need. Um, I think there are different challenges posed by physical products versus digital products. And I think that's where, you know, I can't speak in depthly to that. I know that in certain instances, it will just change sort of the, the cadence of your work life in the sense of, say, like automotive, you know, they, before they launch a new car or an updated you know, version to a car, there must be months and months and months, you know, of, of work involved in a feature or a product update. So their sprints, as we call them, like the length of, of um, their project timeline is probably much longer, is my guess. I'm sorry I can't speak more to that. <laughs> I do think it, it's fascinating and be very interesting to do. Hey, yep. I think it's a tendency sometimes to always try to apply for positions with the bigger tech companies, but do you feel that you can get just the same amount of knowledge in a PM role in a smaller startup, or maybe even more knowledge because you're kind of like one of the few there and you're kind of leading the path towards like what the company is doing? Like, do you think there's like pros and cons to both sides of like a PM in a big tech company and then a PM in like a small startup? Yeah, um, the question was, uh, are there pros and cons to being a PM at a big tech company or, uh, versus a smaller startup? Absolutely. Um, Hundred percent. I mean, I so I had spent most of my PM career so far at a big at a big tech company, um, and and now at a much smaller one, um, and it's very different. Um, I will make a disclaimer. I think every company, every team runs differently, so I think that that's one thing to note. Um, but just generally, from big versus small, yes, I would say. But there are tra there there are pros and cons. So yes, the fact that the team is smaller at a startup you are probably gonna be wearing multiple hats. You're probably gonna be touching a bit more stuff um, than you would at a big tech company. When I was at CBS, you know, we were, everyone was very specialized, um, but there were exceptions to that. So again, it goes down to what is the team and what's the team doing um, and asking the right questions when you're in an interview to, to understand that. Um, but I will say um, on the smaller team side, you could be wearing more hats and having your you know, fingers and more things, but you know, it, it could be done in a different way. You know, startups are known to be quite, like, sometimes, depending on the state they're in, haphazard, you know, because 
you know, they need to get something done because they need to get that $10 million, you know, investment or, or whatnot. Um, and sometimes, you know, in, in startup, you don't really know what you're doing. You just, you're just trying things. So when you're at um, a more mature, larger, larger company, a lot of times you, um, it, it's, it's more structured, but you also might have a more refined way of doing things. So you could potentially learn more in some ways there. So you, you learn more in different ways in both the small and large setting, I would say, from my experience. Yeah, I, uh, I'd say it's, it's, it's tough, but it's about like asking the right questions when you're in an interview to understand like what you're walking into. Um, and I would say don't be shy about that if, you know, and I've learned this over time to sort of, you know, say, hey, here are my like goals and aspirations so that when I walk in, you know, you know we all know what I need to do, but we all know like what I want to get to. So um, with your manager. So, yeah, hope that helps. It's one of those things, it's, uh, it's hard to grasp until like, you're in it, and then you're like, yes, <laughs> yes, this makes sense. Um, any other questions? Are, is everyone here mostly all trying to get into product management but not in it yet? Okay, cool, awesome. I, I wish you the best of luck. It is amazing. Um, it's like, it's, it's worked to get there, but, uh, but it's awesome.